Hi, you're watching Flight Steinberg's YouTube channel. And today, let's build a small general MIDI playback device. This is on behalf of a viewer question, and I hope you're watching this video today, because this really made me turn my hairs out. <laughs> As usual with this kind of videos, let's begin with the parts needed for this project. Here I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. If you want to use bigger sample libraries, you might want to consider Pi 4 or 5 instead, but that won't be as nice and compact as this build. Here's the Pyramony Pirate Audio Line Outboard, which not only has a Hi-Fi Berry compatible digital audio converter, but also has a display and four buttons, which is just the perfect mesh for our needs. I also I also bought this USB and network adapter. Here's a small battery powered speaker and last but not least an SD card to install the software on. Now assemble the parts. The audio board goes onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIO port. Connect the network adapter to the left USB port and the speaker to the audio out port. Now insert the SD card into your computer. It's time to install Linux. Now download the Raspberry Pi Imager tool and choose the 32-bit Lite OS. Walk through the assistant and wait until the SD card is ready for use. In this assistant you can specify which Wi-Fi network the Pi should use and whether or not to use the secure shell login. Please do both. Then take the SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi and turn it on by connecting a micro USB cable to its power port. If your Pi is connected to a cable or Wi-Fi network, you can now log in from your Windows computer. Open the terminal window and type SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi and the default password is Raspberry. First step, as usual, is to make sure you've got all the latest patches. So type sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade and wait for the operating system to do its thing. We now need to prepare the operating system to use the Pirate Audio Board. As this is connected to the GPIO port, we need to enable the I2C and SPI interfaces, which is done quickly by typing sudo recipe config, then choosing interface options and turning on I2C and SPI. Next, add the two lines seen on screen right now to the config file found in slash boot slash firmware. This will enable the Hi-Fi Berry DAC or digital analog converter. The software that plays back the general MIDI files is FluidSynth, so install that by typing sudo apt install FluidSynth. FluidSynth is a rumble synthesizer that uses sound fonts and sound fonts are sample libraries that provide multi-layered samples with envelopes, LFOs, filters, chorus and reverb effects and everything you'd expect from a Rumpler or PCM synthesizer. FluidSynth comes with a 6MB and 128MB general MIDI sound font, but we'll download some alternatives as well later. After FluidSynth is installed, we need to install Python and some libraries to write a short script that will scan directories for MIDI files, display them on screen and let us select start and stop MIDI file playback using the four buttons on the Pirate Audio board. Once Python is installed, we can use the Python package installer to get the ST7789 libraries, which we'll need to print text to the screen. Next, we'll grab the ST7789 example codes from Pyramony's GitHub page. There is an example in there which shows scrolling text on the screen, but in order to make that work, we need to install yet another package called libopenblaz. Dev. Okay, now that's working. Let's try to play back a MIDI file using FluidSynth from the command line. As you can see here, FluidSynth is now complaining it can't run in high priority mode. So let's fix that by editing the limitsconf file found in slash etc slash security and adding the two lines seen on screen now. Now it's time to reboot the system, so type sudo reboot and wait for some seconds before logging back in. 
We can now upload some MIDI files to the Raspberry Pi using, for example, FileZilla. Starting Fluid Synth from the command line should now start playback properly. Now let's grab some alternative sound fonts for 16 megabytes and 32 megabytes of RAM so we can optimize playback later. Okay, the last step now is to write a short Python script to tie all of this together. So here's some copy and paste programming supported by Microsoft Copilot. We need to import the libraries we installed previously. There are some global variables here for holding the text on screen, the MIDI file folder and the four buttons. Next we have a function that handles button presses. It will scroll up and down the list of MIDI files when the right buttons are pressed and start and stop playback when the left buttons are pressed. We then scan the directory for MIDI files and create an array containing the file names and assign the function declared previously to the buttons. Next, we'll initialize the screen. Take note here because Pirimoni's example code falsely claims the screen backlight is controlled on pin 19, but in reality it's pin 13, and if you don't change that, this part of the code will mute the audio output which I found out after reading forum posts from five years ago. Yeah, I guess five years is just a bit too little time to fix those examples, right, Pyramony? The last part of the code blanks the screen, loads a true type font and prints all the MIDI file names to the screen. The MIDI file currently selected gets highlighted by inverting the colors. By pressing the right upper or lower buttons, a variable named selected index will be increased or decreased by 1, which determines the spot in the list of MIDI files we're looking at currently. And that's it, a nice little project where most of the time was spent searching for answers in forums. I guess that's the Linux way. This script is far from perfect, but I'm counting on you to expand on it. You can find this on my GitHub page, which is linked in this video's description. Yeah, and that's it for today. A very small general MIDI file playback device built on a Raspberry Pi 2.0 and the Pyramony Pirate Audio Board. So if you think that was interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you're interested in seeing a tutorial how to design and 3D print an enclosure for devices like this, please leave a comment under this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.